Hey there, everybody. Uh, Paul Lake here with another physics problem solved. This is where I take a physics problem given to me by one of my tutoring clients, and I work the problem out with lots of explanations all the way through to the end and hopefully the right answer. And uh, so hopefully uh, you'll find this to be helpful to you. If, if it is, uh, please give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel, all that sort of thing. And uh, so let's get started. Uh, today's problem is this, uh, we have a car, and it's kind of a long problem. This is just like five parts here. A car is parked on a steep incline, making an angle of 37 degrees below the horizontal and overlooking the ocean. When its brakes fail and it begins to roll, starting from rest at t equals zero, the car rolls down the incline with a constant acceleration of 4.39 meters per second squared, traveling 46.5 meters to the edge of a vertical cliff. The cliff is 30 meters above the ocean. Find the speed of the car when it reaches the edge of the cliff, and then uh, A, and then B, find the time interval elapsed when it arrives there. <clears throat> C, uh, find the velocity of the car when it lands in the ocean. And then D, find the total time interval the car is in motion. And then finally E, uh, find the position of the car when it lands in the ocean relative to the base of the cliff. Whew. Okay, long problem. Um, but here's what you need to know. Uh, you need to know the kinematic equations for constant acceleration. And you also need to know how to solve projectile motion problems, which are, are kind of a, a, a special category of um, constant acceleration problems. If you haven't, if you, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're not ready to do this problem, go back and study this stuff. Um, and then, uh, but if you are ready to start the problem, I encourage you to pause the video now and try to do this yourself. Um, took me about 20 minutes to do the whole problem. So uh, uh, good luck with that. Now, uh, let's start off by drawing a nice little picture of the problem given. Um, and this is really a two-part problem. You have the part of the problem where the car is rolling down the ramp. And then once it leaves the ramp, it becomes a projectile because it's only under the, uh, uh, you know, the acceleration due to gravity, which is straight down. So we're going to, um, we're going to have to deal with this in two parts. So let me just draw a little picture here. So here's our cliff. Okay. And here's the water. Okay. So here's, the, now we have a ramp here. And the, the angle of this ramp was given to be 37 degrees. Okay, let me blow this up so you can see it a little better. Now here's my car. Okay, now my car has an initial velocity of zero. Now V sub zero, that means the velocity when time was equal to zero is zero. Okay, and then the ramp, uh, I think it, they said it was 46.5. I'm going to call that delta X down the ramp is 46.5 meters from, from here to here. Uh, we know what the acceleration of the car is down the ramp. Uh, that was, it's given to be 4.39 meters per second squared. And let's see. Um, oh, and we also know that the cliff is 30 meters high. From there to there. Okay. Now, uh, I think that's everything that's given. Now, what are we trying to find? Now, uh, for A, we want the speed, speed now, of the car when it reaches the edge of the cliff, which is right here. So I'm going to call that V sub 1. I'm going to call this is position 1 when it reaches the end of the cliff. This is position 0. This is position 1. And then I think you can see the car is going to go splash right in here um, and I'm going to call this v2 now for a uh, find the speed of the car speed is the um, well if we figure out the velocity the speed is just uh, you know the magnitude of the velocity vector okay and then for part B what do we want to find the time interval when it takes so we want to know t1 
right? And then for part C, you gotta be really careful here. Uh, it says, find the velocity of the car when it lands in the ocean. The velocity. Now, velocity is a vector. And uh, I believe the problem, this, this is taken from a computer, you know, one of those computer problems where you have to enter in the answers and they wanted a magnitude and a direction. So we're gonna um, uh, figure out what V2 is, a uh, magnitude and direction. And then, uh, uh, and, it's, and, 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 and be careful with that because sometimes they ask for speed and sometimes they ask for velocity and you gotta really know the difference between those two. Now for part D, um, find the total time interval in the car's motion. So from here, here. over to here, I'm going to call that T total. And then, uh, and then finally for part E, uh, we want to find the position of the car when it lands in the ocean uh, relative to the base of the cliff. I'm going to call this delta X2. Right, we have a delta x, I'll call this delta x1, it's from here to here, and then, but this delta x is from here to here. So again, this is kind of two problems in one. So we want delta x2. All right, so now let's solve it. Now let's solve part a. Now, this is fairly straightforward. Ignore all this stuff. Just, just look at what's given here. You want the, um, you have the initial velocity. You want the final velocity at the bottom here. You know the acceleration and you know delta x. Now what's missing? What are they not giving us? And we're not trying to find it, at least not yet. We will in part b. Time. So I want to use the kinematic equation that doesn't have time in it. Now, you, we have four, I like to call them four kinematic equations, right? Um, and you can apply these in the y direction or x direction or delta r, whatever you want to call them. But, and that is v equals v naught plus a times t. And then we have delta, I'll, I'll just use delta x, but you can use delta y too. Now, the, the, the initial plus the final velocity divided by two, this gives me the average velocity times time. The average velocity times time gives you your total displacement. And then you also have this one. And hopefully you've derived these. Now, this is v naught squared plus 2a delta x. So these are the four equations that I use. All of them have the initial velocity. You always need to know that. Or you need to be given enough stuff where you can solve for it. But what's missing? What's missing? Well, this equation doesn't have delta x in it. This equation doesn't have acceleration in it. This equation doesn't have final velocity in it. And this equation doesn't have time. So this is how I know, in part A anyway, that I want to use this equation because I'm not given the time it takes to go down the ramp, and I'm not trying to solve for it yet. Now, there are um, five quantities. V naught is never missing. So one, two, three, four, five, five quantities. To do kinematic problems, they're gonna give you three. They're always gonna give you three, or, or you can't solve it, all right? So if you know three, you can figure out the rest. And, and one of the things you can do is say, oh, what's missing? Oh, I don't know time. I'm not trying to find time. I'm going to use this equation. So let's use that equation. So this is V squared equals V naught squared plus twice acceleration times my displacement. Now, the nice thing is V naught is right up here. Try to keep in mind when you're using an equation where these values are in the problem that you're solving. V naught, that's up here now for this. This is zero, and so now I can just solve for v equals the square root of 2a delta x. And now I have to be really careful now, because you might like you might accidentally use you know 9.8 meters per second squared right here. No, no, no. The, the acceleration of the car on this ramp is given to be that. So this is two times 4.39 meters per second squared. 
uh, times delta x, and that's given to be 46.5 meters. Okay. Now I plugged all that into my calculator to get my answer. This is uh, uh, v1. It's just the speed. We know what the direction is, right? Because it's following that ramp, but they didn't ask for that. And uh, when I plugged all that in, I got 20.2 meters per second. Three significant figures, and everything that's given is three. So if you're doing one of those computer uh, homeworks, you got to keep those significant figures in mind. Okay, now, so that's part A. Um, now, part B, okay, um, well, we want to know the time it took to get from here to here. Now, I'd really, I could use this answer, but what if I made a mistake solving for this? I don't want to carry that mistake forward, so I want to use a kinematic equation that doesn't have final velocity in it, and that would be this third one on my list. So I call this one, two, three, four. So this third equation right here doesn't have final velocity in it. So I have delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay. Now some good stuff happens here. V naught is zero. So once again, it goes away. And this allows me to solve for time directly without using the quadratic formula. Oh, I forgot to silence my phone. And I am not going to answer it now. All right. Um, so uh, I'm going to say t is equal to multiply both sides by 2. 2 delta x divided by the acceleration. Take the square root, right? Just a bunch of algebra. And twice, now we know what delta x is, right? That's 46.5 uh, meters. And we're going to divide that by the acceleration, which is 4.39 meters per second squared. Oh, meters cancels meters. I have 1 over 1 over second squared. I, I reciprocate and multiply that second squared. The square root of second squared is seconds. Yay, the units work. Okay, so the time here in my answer, my T1, when I plugged all that in, I got 4.60 seconds. Now, we can check. We can... Uh, we can check to see if these are consistent with each other because let's just do that real quick. So V equals V naught plus A T. So V equal, that's zero. So this is 4.3, uh, wait, what, what is the excel? Yeah, 39 meters per second squared times time, which we got 4.60. Um, uh, seconds, sorry. That cancels meters per second. Now, I didn't do this ahead of time, but 4.39 times 4.6 equals, oh, look what I get, 20.2. If I round it off to three significance, three, yeah, so woohoo. So this means, hey, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm getting the right answers for these things, okay. Now let's move on to part C, and I'll do that up here. Now part C is the longest part of this problem, it takes most work. And now it says, uh, what is the velocity, well, let me shrink this down. What is the velocity when we get here? You can see the car is going to go, and, and just before it hits the water, it's going to have a final velocity. Don't make the mistake of saying, oh, the velocity is zero because it hits the water. That's a trivial answer. We want to know the velocity of the car just before it hits the water, as it's just coming in contact with the water. So don't be silly and say it's zero. All right. Now, part C. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to look at this and say, oh, 
this has an X component and a Y component. And one of the things I have to recognize to get this final velocity is that the car is in free fall. Okay. Now, what do we know about, uh, well, it's in free fall and it's in projectile motion. So the only acceleration we have is in the negative y direction, and that's the acceleration due to gravity. So A equals negative 9.81 meters per second squared. You know this, right? Hopefully. Okay. So, um, so we, we, we're going to have, we have an initial velocity of the car going down. It's not zero. And we have the velocity of the car going across. And then the velocity in the y direction for the car is going to accelerate at the acceleration of gravity. But in the x direction, there is no acceleration in the x direction once it leaves that ramp. No, no, no horizontal acceleration, which means its velocity in the, in the horizontal direction is constant. So I'm going to set over here, I'm going to call this x, and this is y. And over here, this was x. And this would be y, but over here, you, you, you can do a second problem. You can change your axes however it's convenient. And, um, and so we're going to say, well, look, when you get down here, v2, the magnitude of it anyway, is going to be equal to the square root of its x component. So I'm going to call it v2x squared plus its y component, v2y squared. Okay, well, we got to figure out what these are. So if I look at the, let's look at the edge of the cliff. Let's just draw the edge of the cliff here. We don't really care that much about, well, the ramp, here comes the ramp. It's at 37 degrees like this, and then the ramp stops. But the, oh, let me tilt my paper here. So this is my initial velocity. And my, uh, oh, let me draw it down. This is the initial velocity now. Well, see, the initial velocity for the second part of the problem is the final velocity for the first part of the problem. For the first part of the problem. So um, we know what this is. This is equal to 20.2 meters per second, right? But then we have an x component and a y component. And this is v naught x, but this is a constant. So, so that means that, that this component of the velocity as the car comes off the cliff is, is going to be equal to the x component of the car as it's hitting the water. So this initial x component is equal to, the, to, to this final one. So we need to figure out what that is. Now, if this is 37 degrees and this is negative 37 degrees, okay, from here to here, and so to figure this out, it's pretty easy. I just take the hypotenuse and multiply it by the cosine of the, uh, this angle. And so let's do that. So V2x is going to be equal to 20.2 meters per second times the cosine of negative 37 degrees. You don't really need the negative there. because It doesn't matter. So V2x... Now, when I plug that in, where did I put it? Um, I got 16.12 meters per second. Okay. So, I got that. Now, V2 and the Y. Uh, well, the, um, Now, I don't know the amount of time it takes. So, the equation that I'm going to use to figure out what the final velocity in the Y direction is going to be this fourth one again. So let's see. So that's going to be V2Y squared equals V2 initial squared uh, plus, or in the Y, too many subscripts, uh, plus 2A delta Y. Let me put it in the Y direction. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this is not zero. So this, uh, so uh, V2... Uh, not y, or I, I, you know, the the the, velo the initial velocity as it came off uh, the uh, cliff, um, that's going to be equal to 
20.2 meters per second times the sine of negative 37 degrees. And when you plug that in, you get, um, where did I put that? Um, negative 12.16. meters per second. So now I can plug that in there. So V2y is equal to the square root of this. Squared plus 2a. Now we have a different a now. This is the a due to the acceleration of gravity. Now here's something that's kind of tricky. What is delta y? Well, in this second part of the problem, delta y goes from here to here. So a common mistake that students make is they'll just put 30 meters right there. But that's not correct because it fell down 30 meters. So if they give you a height, but it's falling down from that height, you got to remember to make it negative. Delta y, when you go from here to here, delta y is negative because I said up is positive so down is negative it fell down negative displacement so that's going to be negative 30 meters okay now let's check our units we have meters squared per second squared we've got meters squared per second squared and then we're taking the square root of that so we get meters per second Woohoo! all right also remember when you take the square root of something squared the answer is plus or minus and um, I'll let you think about why that's true. I, I, this video is going to be long enough. Um, V2y is equal to, well, because look, if you take the, squ the square root of negative 2 squared is 2. The square root of 2 squared is 2. So there's two answers that you can have. You can have negative 2 squared or 2 squared. It's the same thing. So... Uh, anyway, let's, let's, do, oh, I don't need a calculator. I've already done this ahead of time. So B2Y is, when you plug all that in, negative, we're going to keep the negative 27.14 meters per second. Now, Y negative, it's falling down. Look, look, the, the Y component of this is down. It's negative. Oh, sorry. The, the Y component of this final velocity is down. So make it negative. Even though you you know because this is plus or minus. All right, all right, all right, all right. So now let's let's figure out what v two is. We're ready to do that. V two is equal to the square root of v two and the x. That's uh, sixteen point one two meters per second squared plus. Uh, negative 27.14. Of course, the negative goes away here. We're just figuring out the magnitude of it. And so V2 is equal to, when you plug all that in, uh, let's see, when I did that, I got 31.6. When I round it off, meters per second. Now, this is the magnitude of V2, right? But, they, but if you read the problem carefully, it wants... It says, you know, what is the velocity? And velocity is a vector, so you have to give the uh, direction of it. So let's, now the direction of that is just the inverse tangent of the y component and the x component of those velocities. And so uh, we're going to take the inverse tangent of. Uh, by, what did it say, by, negative 27.14, and then b in the x, uh, 16, right, yeah, 16.13 meters per second, and when you do all that, you get an angle of uh, negative, did I do it? Where did I do it? Negative 59.3 degrees. Okay, so now I'm just going to state my answer. V2 in polar coordinates, 
31.6 meters per second at an angle of negative 59.3 degrees. And then I'm going to, you know, kind of look it over and, and make sure this answer kind of makes sense, right? Um, so the, the magnitude seems about right, you know, based on where it started and how far it fell down. It's going to be going pretty fast. And does that negative 59? Yeah, look, it's going to be a negative angle, right? It's going to be below the horizontal. And that's what that negative means. We're rotating clockwise from the positive x-axis when we're dealing with polar coordinates. And so there you go. Oh, dear, I've run out of room on this paper. So let me get another sheet here. And we're going to do the next part. We're going to do part D. Let me put uh, D right here. And I think I will make it a little bigger. Now, D, we want the total time. Well, that's a weird subscript, T total. <laughs> okay. Well, that's really the time it takes to go down the ramp, which I'm calling T1, plus uh, the time it takes to go from, from, you know, from, from here to here. I'll call that T free fall while well, it's in free fall. Well, let's figure out what T free fall is. We already know what this is. Now, um, how much time does it take to fall from here to here? Well, we know what the initial velocity is in the y direction, and we know what the final velocity in the y direction is. So we can just use um, that first kinematic equation, um, V2, the final velocity in the y direction, plus the initial velocity in the y direction, uh, V1y or V2naught y, however you want to call that, plus uh, a times t. And this is the t while it's in free fall. Okay. So I'm just using the kinematic equation just for the projectile motion part of it. So t, oops, T free fall. We're still on camera. Yeah. T free fall uh, is going to be equal to the, the final velocity in the y minus its initial velocity in the y divided by the acceleration. Well, v2 in the y, the final velocity in the y, where was that? v2y, that's negative 27.14 meters per second minus. Now, what was the initial velocity right after it came off the ramp? The initial velocity for the free, free fall part of it, um, let's see, right here, right? That negative 12.16. So negative 12.16 meters per second. Notice you're subtracting a negative. Okay, kind of makes sense. Makes the time smaller. It was already falling down. Uh, all right, so, and then this is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And when you do all that, oops, I'm going to stay on screen here. Uh, when you do all that god-awful mess, what did I get? Um, it's not very much time. It's 1.53 seconds. So now to find the total time, T1. What was T1? That was four, that was the time down the ramp, which we already know is 4.60 seconds, plus the time it was in free fall, which is 1.53 seconds. And when I add those together, I get my answer. So T total uh, is um, 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 6.13 seconds. So that car was in motion for the total problem. The time it was released from the top of the ramp to the time it hit the water, 6.13 seconds. Now, the last part, E, uh, we, want, we want delta x. We want to know, you know the time from here to here. Well, remember, in the x direction, there is no acceleration. Well, we can do this. We can say, oh, okay, delta x 
is equal to v naught x times t plus one half a in the x times t squared. Right? This is just one of the kinematic equations. But there is no acceleration in the x direction. Keep the x direction and the y direction separate in your mind. A lot of students want to put 9.8 right here, but nine, gravity doesn't pull sideways. <laughs> gravity pulls down. So this is zero here. Okay. So this, well, I, I, can, I can do this now. So delta x equals v naught x. Now that's the velocity it left the ramp right, with in the x direction. So that's, uh, what, what did we get? Uh, V2x is equal to v naught. That's the 16. 0.12 meters per second. Oh, I'm off screen. That's uh, the 16.12 meters per second. Now, how much time? What am I going to multiply this? How how much time was it going this speed in the x direction? Only while it was in free fall. Not the total time, not the time down the ramp, but only the time while it was in free fall. And we already calculated that. Where do we put that? Um, oh, it's right here. 1.53 seconds. So you really have to think, you know, you're not just plugging and checking. You have to say, okay, what time are we talking about? What part of the problem are we addressing? And when you do that, you get delta x equals, uh, I got 24.7 meters. So that means this, um, this car is going to splash, you know, uh, uh, 24.7 meters from the base of the cliff. Oh, long problem. Sorry, but this was a homework problem that was given to me. Let's uh, zoom out so maybe you can see the whole thing. Okay, a lot of good stuff. If you can do this problem on your own, you're in good shape. Um, and uh, hey, if you found this problem helpful, please give the video a like. Um, hey, in the comments, if you need a tutor, go to the description, and there's a link on how to get in contact with me there. And, uh, or in the comments, if you would like to see, if you have a physics problem you'd like to see solved and you want me to make a video of it, uh, put it in the comments and I'll, I'll see it. And if it's a, if it's a good problem, if I have time, I'll do it for free. All right. Um, so anyway, hope this was helpful to you. And, uh, until next time, May the net force be with you.